Even after that, 2008-9, when the international financial crisis took place, we took measures to prevent the GDP growth further falling, and it rested at 6.7. Subsequently, in the two years, world economy was still fragile. There was no growth in the developed economy. World output substantially depended on the contribution of the emerging market economy, led by China, and followed by India and many other countries. But in the subsequent two years, we improved our GDP growth, as the latest figure available speak of 8.4% and 9.3%. Then came the Eurozone crisis, which impacted our economy substantially, because till then, nearly 36% of our exports are destined towards Europe. And as there was no demand, thanks to our policy of diversification of our export destination, we were able to maintain and somehow float above the crisis level. But nonetheless, it had its impact. The oil crisis, which continued, if somebody looks at the figure, they will notice that from 1999 to 2004, the annual average price which India had to pay in terms of US dollar was 38, 36 to 38 dollar per barrel. And never after 2004, during this period, which is also the period of India's high growth story. We did never get oil in less than 60 to 70 dollar per barrel. And a couple of years, it ran as high as more than 110 dollars or 108 dollars per barrel. Consumption of oil has increased substantially. Domestic production, compared to that, is very insignificant. Keeping all these factors in mind, to my mind, yes, there is area of concern, but there is no scope and room for despondency. We have learned, and this lesson we got from our father of nations, that we shall have to sort our problems in our own way. When Mahatma Gandhi advises, I quote a few lines. I do not want my houses to be walled in all sides and my windows to be stuffed. I want the cultures of all lands to be blown about my house as freely as possible. But I refuse to be blown off my feet by any. I refuse to live in other people's houses as an interloper, a beggar, or a slave." Unquote. We can take assistance, we can take help. But from the day one, our basic fundamental approach was self-reliance. Self-reliance not in dogmatic form or dogmatic sense, but self-reliance in pragmatic way. We have evolved our policies, but not we copied blindly the policies pursued by any major economy. 
always we had to keep in mind the socio economic conditions prevailing in the country and to keep in mind the talisman which father of nation gave us as an important advice that always remember whenever you are in doubt that the decision which you are going to take whether it is correct or incorrect shut your eyes for a moment try to remember the face of the weakest person you have come across in your life and consider the decision which you are going to take whether will be of any benefit to him or her you will find your doubts have melted therefore always we had to keep in our mind the impact on our society we have changed as and when it was required look at industrial policy investment policy from 1948 to 1999 several times there had been changed first industrial policy resolution we adopted in 1948 even before the adoption of the constitution we made a major change in 1956 we made another change in 1973 we made another change in 1980 and we made major changes in 1991 if we started with the concept of dominant height of public sector it is not because of any fancy of idea or because of any dogmatic approach but because of the fact that on the ground the indian private sector was extremely weak the phenomenal growth which has taken place in indian public sector starting from five public sector enterprises with an investment of 29 crores of rupees to the present day of investment levels and the variety of activities conducted by the public sectors is simply mind boggling if somebody looks at the budgetary transactions during these six decades more than six decades when the first finance minister of independent india sanmukham chetty presented the first budget of independent india not on the last working day of february as it is being done now but on 14th of or uh, 26th of november 1947 because budget of in undivided india was presented by mr liaquat ali as member finance of the interim government on the last working day of the financial uh, february of 1947 48 after few months the partition took place therefore the government decided to have the budget of its own for independent india and if you look at the figure you will be surprised to know what a small amount it was it was the total budgetary transaction was 197 crores and expenditure was very simple military expenditure and civil expenditure 91 crores and 106 crores deficit was just 26 crores of rupees total revenue collection was 116 crores income tax 50 crores 50 lakhs customs duty no excise duty no wealth tax no gift tax no service tax and there was another very peculiar tax customs duty on imported alcohol as it was a temporary tax that's why it was never included in the 
customs duty, it was only 2 crores 50 lakhs. Therefore, that was the level of Indian economy. And the budget which Mr. Chidambaram presented, the budgetary transaction for the year 2013-14 are going to be around 16 lakh crores of rupees. This has been possible substantially by the efforts of the Indian people, their farmers, their industrial workers, their engineers, their professional managers, technically competent personnel. If Indian economy today is the third largest economy from purchasing power parity, it is not the gift by any, of anybody. It is the achievement which Indian people have achieved through pursuing its own economic policies. As I was telling you, we have always become pragmatic, looking at the need of the hour and our people. We did not hesitate to change the course. Therefore, it was quite possible for the country, which once legislated to restrict the foreign investment in the form of FERA, foreign exchange, Exchange, Foreign Exchange Regulation Act. The starting companies which had huge investment were asked to divest their investment. The same country could transform that from FERA to FEMA. Not Foreign Exchange Regulation, but Foreign Exchange Management. Till today, if you look at the contribution of our developmental expenditure are substantially coming from our own savings. Rate of savings and rate of investment, the margin is small which are contributed substantially from external sources. That does not mean that we do not require external support. We require external support for our capital formation, to meet our critical marginal requirement. We need it for technology. We need it for best practices. We need it for upgrading the better model of economic governance and planning. But at the same time, let us not be blown off by ideas of others. Let us stick to our ground and absorb it. You are entering into the services, not only with fresh mind, fresh ideas, but also with the fresh, far-reaching uh, <clears throat> approach. You need not carry any baggage. You should always remember the whole world belongs to you. You can do the correct thing. You can take the right decision at the right moment. And that should be the spirit to the young men and women of this country. With these words, I wish you all success in your endeavors. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.